Hello everyone and welcome back to Nate the Hoof Guy. Today's video, well it's pretty obvious what we got going on here. This cow has stepped on something with her right front foot and embedded it in that claw. Now if you followed my shorts, you've gotten a little bit of teaser of this trim. Today you're going to get the full thing, so buckle up and let's get started. Now as this cow walked into the chute, I knew she was favoring that right front foot, but I really didn't see anything that jumped out at me as being a problem. There was no real swelling. Everything looked pretty much normal until of course I hit this with my grinder as I started trimming. And there we have it. She has stepped on a rusted off piece of nail, approximately three quarters of an inch long. You'll notice as I start trimming here, a perfect black circle right around where that nail was. That's common with things like this, and I think all it is is just some oxidation from that piece of metal being in there. Now the next obvious question is, is how does a cow go about stepping on a nail? Are people just dropping nails and not picking them up? And of course, that is not what's happening. Over time, structures on farms can become weathered from wind loosening up the steel on the roofs to the steel on the sides of the buildings, things like that. And these nails can become worked loose and that's how they become accessible to a cow for her to step on them. Now, over the course of the last three years making videos, I've come across a handful of different instances where pieces of metal or screws or nails or things like that have become embedded in the claws of these cow's hooves. Now you might think to yourself, that seems like a lot. But in reality, in that same amount of time, I've trimmed about 30,000 cows. Yeah, that equates to 120,000 feet trimmed in that three-year time frame. And in that time frame, just a handful of times have we come across pieces of metal. So suggestions to perhaps use a magnet to comb the grounds to make sure that there's no metal for a cow to step on or to cover the pastures, things like that. It's just not feasible for as rare as these instances are. All that being said, I don't want to downplay the significance of this because obviously this has caused lameness for this cow and no farmer wants to see that. And luckily for this cow, that nail hasn't been in there very long and has disrupted just a very small area of corium. Now at this point in the trim, I'm trying to preserve that outside wall, but I'm starting to come to the realization that's not going to be possible in this case due to all the separation and leaving at that there may cause complications. So I'm going to bring that down to the normal level and then I'm going to continue working to remove any loose stuff. Where my knife is right now is where that nail was, but all of the surrounding area, that pinkish colored area, is actually healthy corium with the very thinnest layer of new horn produced on that. That as that sole separates, it allows that older sole to lift away to try to provide relief to whatever may be ailing that foot, and in so doing, that new uh, that corium produces a new layer of horn underneath that to replace that existing layer as it would naturally slough off. Now in our case, we're going to remove that to speed this healing along. Now you'll notice as I'm working here, that rubber block, it's kind of getting in my way with my knife work right now. And that's why I typically wait till the end of these trims to put that block on. The reason I put it on early here, it's cold outside and I really didn't believe that this area of 
uh, separation was going to be nearly as large as it was. I thought it was going to be more isolated right around that puncture site. Happened to be much larger, so that's why now that block is in the way. Nothing that we can't work around, but it's obvious why I leave that block or wait to put that block on till the end, because sometimes it does get in the way. Working carefully toward the top here because you're never really sure where that transition from live horn to hard horn is. So you gotta be careful when you're working, make sure you're just taking off what you want to. Now you might be watching and thinking, why don't you just take this area right here and take that all out of there, that white area. I don't want to do that. That is actually soft material right now. In a couple of days as that dehydrates, that'll flake away harmlessly. But right now, you might cause damage by removing it. So I'm just going to leave it in place. It's going to cause no uh, complications to this healing whatsoever. We'll give this area one final spray down, get it dried off, and then we'll apply our salicylic acid wrap. Even though this has caused a large area of soul separation, the area of corium disturbed is actually very small, and typically something like this is going to heal up quite nicely. So let's get this foot wrapped, we'll let her out and see how she's walking after our treatment. All right guys, that's going to do it for this cow for now. We'll check back with her in a little bit to see how she's recovering. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you all on the next one.